Morning everyone, you join uh, myself and Luke Hello. on the banks of Beerley Lakes. Now I've been here a couple of times before myself for uh, personal trips, had a good time, some lovely fishing here, but this is your first time? It is, yep, never seen the venue before, uh, so we had a quick walk around earlier, really nice little venue, probably, was it three, four acres in Something total? Something like that, yeah. And uh, little, little lodges dotted around amongst normal kind of traditional swims as well, so quite a nice place. Ideal, isn't it? so it means don't have to put up the bivvies today because we've had a little walk around we quite like the look of the top end. It's good for um, having a bit of social filming each other and things, but it's also where fish have been coming out, we've uh, heard from the owner, which is spot on. As you can see, weather-wise, we're mid-September now. It's supposed to be a scorcher today, hence why I'm wearing shorts. But, um, but it's very cold at the moment, hence why I've got joggers and a coat on. So we're rather mixed. <laughs> I think I'm going to come in, uh, come in handy that I'm wearing shorts this afternoon. But right now I'm cold, hence the hot drink. But um, the plan of attack is something a bit different, we're using Gemini Tidy Booms. Now, you may remember a previous video we done, which was at Coken Farm. Coken Farm, yeah. So we were using the Tidy Stems, which obviously made solid bag fishing a lot easier. And we, we had quite a few fish between us that yes. time, didn't we? So pressure's on to have a good session here. It's not been fishing brilliantly, we've heard. So uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But uh, the idea being is that we're gonna be using the Tidy Stems, uh, uh, Tidy Booms, sorry. And we'll talk you through how they work, how they look, how they are set up for now finish this, get around to our swims and uh, see if we can get some fish on the bank this session. So we finally got the gear around to our swims and uh, I was a bit more lucky than Luke because I got all of these tidy booms sent to me uh, beforehand so I've managed to knock up a load of rigs last night and whereas tying up loads of rigs often would take a lot of time because these booms are ready to go it took no time at all so I knocked up six Ronnies and three uh, turbo German rigs in probably half the time it would take me to have done three normal rigs so uh, it didn't take too much time up last night when uh, spending it with my missus so we're all ready and today I'm going to go with one Ronnie rig which is as you can see here really nice low line presentation actually this is the low line Ronnie presentation that you can get and I think the reason it's uh, probably lower than normal is because when you tie a rolly rig, you often use a uni ring swivel. So you've got the larger loop then to a smaller swivel. So it all sits up just a little bit more. But because this is already tied nice and neat, it's slightly uh, lower sitting, proper neat as well, as you can see. And it's got a little loop there for a bit more movement from the hook bait side of view, uh, point of view, sorry. And this one just sits perfectly without the use of any putty with how I've got it set up with this hook size with a little 12 mil pop up. Little, uh, anti-tangle sleeve and it just kicks away from the lead perfectly and also I filmed all of this stuff in the office a few weeks ago and got to get some shots of it in the tank and the correction properties of these are absolutely sublime as you can see from the clip now I just wafted it around loads of times in the tank and it just always wanted to kick as far away from that lead as possible reset itself absolutely perfectly so I've got no issues with this going out for if it needed to be a couple of days as long as I knew my bait was fine I knew this would reset itself I'm not going to do that here because one we're not here for that many days but I would be confident in doing so on the other rigs I'm using Turbo Germans not a rig I've ever used before if I'm honest but I've been playing about with it recently doing some videos filming them for work and I do like the properties of them it's more of a bottom bait presentation this one so I've still got the bait on the shank of the hook with a little hair or the little one shank stop sorry and that is with a 50 mil cultured hook bait <laughs> So it's just getting to early evening now and Joe's finally got all three rods out and uh, I think I've drawn the short straw a little bit by going second. Overegged it a bit there by the way. Overegged it a little bit, it's actually just coming up for about 11 o'clock so going to make a couple of rigs up. So basically for anyone that doesn't know I'm really really unorganised when it comes to my fishing and I pretty much do everything on the bank. I'm not, uh, I'm not brilliant for getting things prepared before actually leaving. So obviously these tidy booms really do work in my favour in that respect because you can literally make up a rig in about a minute. So I'm going to make up a couple of Ronnies. I've got the shorter boom, so the five and a half inch boom 
and then this is supplied with a spinner swivel as well so with a, obviously the little uh, quick quick change clip at the end so it makes it nice and easy just to hook on the hook and then like I say within about a minute you've got a rig made up so I'm going to do that now basically just got to make the hook section up so I just put a little hook bead on I'm using quite small hooks so I'm using just size 8 claw hooks because just for the stamp of fish that's actually in this lake there's nothing nothing huge and there's not really too many snags or anything like that either so again because I like practicality I'm just going to be using a little uh, hook screw as well just because I find them far easier chopping and changing bait rather than putting a ring on and using bait floss and blobbing it down so just put that on there so then you've got the two hook beads and then just the little bait screw in between as well so then it's simply a case of cutting a little bit of tubing slipping that over the eye And then, like I say, the, the quick release or the quick clip on the boom itself just makes it nice and easy. Pull that back over and back over the barrel. So there you go. I mean, even with filming and obviously explaining what I'm doing, it's been about a minute. So if I was just making them up on the bank, I'd be able to do it in probably 30 seconds. So nice and easy, nice and practical. If you need to tie up a rig quickly, if you've caught a fish and you don't have any any spares tied up then they just make life so much easier so i'm just going to put a little pop-up on a little tail rubber as well just to help prevent any tangles but with the boom being stiff like it is to be honest you could probably get away without using the tail rubber so just slide that on there yep, tail rubber on there little 12 mil pop-up just screwed into place The other nice thing worth mentioning about these is obviously they're all preset to a certain size so you don't have to worry about trying to get everything completely matching because you know that your boom is always going to be that that perfect length that you want it to be so the loads of movement so the actual the booms on these ones these are for standard ronnies which is slightly different to what joe's using joe's using a slightly lower sinking boom and basically the main difference is you don't have this extra little ring here so it just brings the swivel a little bit closer to the actual loop itself but for me for the presentation that i want i want that little little bit extra height bit of extra movement as well just because it's, it's quite a silty bottom as well so i'd rather just know that i'm that little bit higher a little bit more out of the way of the debris but yeah like i say 30 seconds to a minute to tie up a fresh rig and then i'm good to go So we've got all our rods out and they're looking pretty good so we're hoping we might get a bite fairly soon but it is actually mega hot now as well yes isn't it? my my plan of wearing shorts this morning i may have been freezing this morning has uh, paid off because it is about mid 20s i think it's from mid september it's a bit bizarre night temperature to day temperature yeah so obviously earlier on we showed you a few different booms we've got more to show you here so there's seven seven different booms in the range in total so we've shown you the Ronnie, uh, I'm using the low level Ronnie. The low level Ronnie, that's it. And then I've got the Ronnie spinner on, and you've also got one of the Turbo Germans. Turbo Germans, that was it, yeah. So obviously they all follow the same sort of principle. They've got the same fuse leader, uh, all tested and made to the same tolerances. Uh, perfect for low visibility. So if you're fishing, it's fairly murky here, which is still fine. But if you're fishing really clear waters, they will virtually invisible in uh, the water. But yeah, seven different variants. There's three different Ronnie styles. Like we said, we've got the uh, low level, the spinner, and then I've got this one, which is a quick change, which is a bit more the swivel you typically see with a Ronnie, because you can change whatever hook you want. And I think the idea behind that is that this one, I've actually just put a tail rubber over the end. So say I caught a fish on this, hook point was dinked. All I've got to do is pull that uh, little tail rubber off, change the hook, put it back on and good to go, which is uh, basically the, the same principle of all of these. They're, they're quick and easy to make and uh, change. 
And we've also got a 360 rig boom. So here, very similar again, just any kind of different pop-up presentation you want or, or bottom bait it seems, you can use these booms for. And you've got a couple of different ones there as well. Yeah, so I've got a, a stiff hinge rig here. And uh, basically the nice thing about it, obviously the, the booms for all of these are available in both seven inches and five and a half inches. But then with the, the stiff section as well, you can, you can make it your own. So if you want it really, really tight to the bottom, then you can do. If you want it a little bit longer, then you can do as well. So the difference with this boom is obviously you've got a little swivel attached to the, the loop at the end, and then you can just tie on, tie on your stiff section there. So again, really nice and easy to do. And then there's also a combi boom as well. So instead of having the swivel at the end of the boom, it's got just a little, a little ring. So then you can obviously tie it on your combi section. And again, like the, like the stiff hinge, you can tie it to whatever length that you want really. So like I say, all of them available in either seven or five and a half inches as well. Mm -hmm. so, and you're more comfortable with five inches, whereas I'm used to seven. So we should probably end up here. <laughs> So we're just coming into the evening and there's not been a great deal to report. It's been mega hot. It's been up to about 28 degrees, I think, today, isn't it? Which for the middle of September, after about an eight, nine degree night, it's been a bit of a contrast. So fish are starting to show a little bit now. There's been quite a bit of activity and I know you were going to get a little bit of bait out. But Yeah, well, I was going to. I got the bucket ready. I was just getting ready, waiting for uh, Luke to get the camera to film a little bit extra because we haven't filmed much today because it's not been a lot to document. It's kind of been put the rods out and wait, it's not been fishing brilliantly, so I don't think casting around lots would have done anything, but uh, just about to put some bait out, fish showed on the right rod, middle rod, and then some bubbles came up on the left, so I thought, well, clearly they're there, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if I got a bite any second, to be honest, because it's been fish activity the last half an hour, it's really been getting a bit more active, so I did say earlier off camera that bite time, I think, is gonna be between eight and half eight, and uh, that gives me just over an hour, so um, I'll be happy, obviously, if anything happens before then, but I do think that coming into the evening and through into the morning is going to be our best bet. It's just been so hot today, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been such a hot day, but then tonight it's meant to stay quite warm as well. So it's, it's only dropping down to about 14 degrees, isn't it, tonight? At lowest, yeah. At the lowest. So there's a good chance that after a hot day, obviously the, the fish are going to be quite active and fingers crossed they might get amongst the bait. Mm -hmm. But like, like you say, we've seen quite a few fish. So I'm just that kingfish you've been trying to film all day has yeah. just landed behind us. And yeah, we've got both cameras right. set up on us. Brilliant. Yeah. But uh, yes, yeah, so let's see what the uh, evening brings, but I'm, mm. I'm still feeling confident there's, there's definitely fish around. 100%. Morning everyone. Unfortunately, we can't say it's a good morning because nothing really happened for either of us. But yeah. it's, a, it's a nice morning, nice yeah, day. If, if you're going down the whole route of it's being there that counts, then yes, it was a beautiful yeah. morning, lovely sunrise. Uh, slept under the stars last night, yeah, not, partly because it was warm, but... Um, not, not by choice. We, uh, we got booted out of the lodges by the massive spiders that were in yes. there. Now, I fished it a few times before and I persevered with it, but because it was nice and warm last night and dry, we decided to sleep outside under the stars because, uh, yeah, like you said, there's lots of big spiders, which neither of us are really keen on. No, I think uh, we've got a little clip on my phone, which you might be able to get the audio from, <laughs> which uh, kind of sums up everything. Oh. This morning looked good, like we were obviously looking out over Luke's swim at the moment and at yeah. one point they were sheeting up like mad, it's like a jacuzzi. Yeah. Um, I don't know what you were doing not to get a bite. I don't know, um, I mean they were showing slightly beyond where the spot was but I mean we're talking three, four foot just past it and there's a nice patch of bait obviously put out of the bait spoon yesterday. So 
they just needed to move on to mm -hmm. it, and for some reason they, well, they just haven't as of yet. But you haven't chosen to bait up any extra bait, have you? No, I haven't. I've, I've tried to keep it as minimal as possible, just just trying to get that one bite. And uh, I mean, so far that that hasn't happened. But but then again, I've gone the opposite route. I've had yeah. the bait over each spot, and fish do seem to be coming round a bit. And since I've last fished it, they've taken out all the pads. So before, you could almost guarantee there was always fish in and around the pads, which is where I often like to fish to. They've been removed, um, yeah. so now it probably means that the fish are, are not as uh, confident because they've got no sort of safe havens, but it does push mm. them around a lot more. So it's not like they're held up in numbers. So I think it is going to be a yeah. case of fish come round and you and you get lucky really if they find the bait spot. Has been some fish showing in my swim, so I'm still confident we've got mm. till early afternoon to salvage this session. But yeah. I wouldn't change the, anything we've done so far. If we start the session again today, say I don't think I'd do anything different. No, I don't think so. Like. I mean, with the rigs, we know that they're presented, so there's no need to keep bringing them in, changing them, anything like that. They, they're going to be sitting well, and I think it just is a matter of time. And where it's kind of, it's unseasonably warm, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's it's just put the fish into a bit of a, a weird frame of mind. But like, like you say, we've got a few hours left, so yeah. there's every chance that we could still get that bite and that fish for the cameras. Fingers crossed. All right. Oh, what did I just say? <laughs> did he just take that rod out? Well, don't want to jinx it. He's going to try and take that rod out again. If he hasn't already, he's on the surface over there. Do we still bring it in? It's incredible. Uh, I think I've got a rave with that rod. Uh, struggling to talk is, as you can see, a rather last minute bite. We've only got a couple of hours left. And this rod, which was out under a tree to the island where an old uh, pad, pad bed was, uh, it started showing signs of fish. Just sat behind the rod, sort of doing a slow pack away. It's absolutely melted off. I don't think it's particularly big, but give me a right old run around. Some of the runs it's taken is incredible. I'm coming back for this rod, so I'm going to actually, I think I might ask Luke to whip that rod in. Yeah and uh, try and get this one in. <laughs> Blank saver! <laughs> that is hard fought for. Well, there we go. Certainly isn't a monster, but uh, the way this session's been going and how we've heard this place has been fishing, it's a result nonetheless. And this was on one of the Turbo Germans with a little bottom bait. Left it out there since probably midday yesterday. And because I knew it was positioned right and if there was any kind of issues with a false pickup it would have corrected itself and this went off I sat right behind the rod absolutely melted away incredible fight as well actually considering the size of it, it took some blistering runs but it slipped in the net and that's the main thing so uh, just a couple of hours left I'm going to stick the rods back out just in case there's any more fish in the area but if not this is more than just a blank saver it's also uh, a rounding off of the video quite nicely happy days Take a few uh, snaps and slip it back. <laughs>